Hey, ka, hey, ka, hey, ka, hi, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. In this following tutorial, I'm going to show you on how to convert a 3D model into a prop. That way you can be able to have some fun items inside your Vignon setup. So, to, before we get started though, I do need to clarify. Vignon rapidly updates. There's going to be a lot of updates down the line of Vignon. So, because of that, and there's a potential chance that, well, a very high chance, honestly, like 98% of the chance, is that Vignon's going to be having a Unity update. It's probably going to change to Unity 2021 or 2022 down the line. Currently, the version that Vignon uses is 2020.3.48. If by any chance you don't have that version of Unity, a link in the description, there will be a direct download to gain that Unity version. But, um... I, that's why I wanted to at least say, so if by any chance my tutorial does happen to get outdated, you will have to apply your own knowledge and do your own self-experimenting. Um, unless there, you know, obviously if there is an absolute reason for a remake of the tutorial, like if there's a very drastic change to the SDK, understandable. But otherwise though, there's, it really just depends on what happens down the line. I cannot guarantee it. So, uh, just keep in mind to be aware about any Vignon updates or changes in the future. Otherwise, though, we're going to be taking um, a game controller that I personally modeled myself, and I'm going to show you how I would convert that to a Vignon prop, basically. So, uh, basically, um, in this next clip I'm going to be showing you is going to be a quick record I'm showing on how you can install the Vignon SDK, which is literally just a simple download the Unity package and then just click and drag. But just in case you are brand new or you don't know how to do that, in the next uh, segment it will show you exactly how to do that so let's get to um, installing the uh, Vignon SDK basically so in order to install the Vignon SDK to unity first of all you're going to be needing the version unity 2020.3.48 now I'm using the wrong version of unity don't ignore what the top part of my screen says but that's the version I recommend to you and that's also what Suvadrail would recommend do keep in mind by the way Vignon does rapidly update so because of that there's going to be a chance Vignon actually it's more of a definite that down the line Vignon's probably going to get um a big unity change so there's going to be like a it's going to probably be in unity 2021 or 2022 down the line um again the date of that is unknown. Probably in the future, maybe you end up um, getting that update. I don't know. But either way, if there happens to be a new update to Vignon, then please make sure you use that version instead and then you disregard the version I just mentioned. But in the making of this tutorial, Unity 2020.3.48 is the version you're going to be using. So, in order to install the Vignon SDK, you basically just go to Unity, uh, open up your project, name it wherever you want. I personally put the UniVRM, um, you know, files here. You don't have to, but that's if you want, if you prefer using Mtune. I usually prefer Mtune for simplicity, but you do whatever you want. Um, but you don't have to. Basically, in File Explorer, you should have, um, you should install the Vignon SDK. Again, the Vignon SDK also updates as well. Um, so just keep an eye out for any updates because, again, Vignon does rapidly update. So I cannot keep, keep up, but I just, you know. So basically, just download the Vignon SDK um, and then you just click and drag the Unity package over to Unity. And then you just click on import. You just give it some time to import, basically. And that's how you would install it. And as you can see, the Vignon SDK is right here, basically. So pretty much uh, from there, you could basically just do what you want in regards to the Vignon SDK, which um, I will then show you in the next clip what's the next thing we're going to be doing. Alright, so once you have the Vignon SDK installed, what you're going to then do is you're going to right click and then you're going to click on create. Then you're going to create a folder and you're going to name this, we could just call this prop. Right? Now this is where I'm going to basically put all my stuff here or you can make like subfolders like um, for mine I can name it game controller here for me, but it could be whatever. Now in case you're wondering, where do you actually get a prop from? You may be wondering. So, 
Uh, if you know how to use Blender, you can actually um, make your own model. So this is Blender here. I modeled this out for myself. Um, but you can basically, you know, make your own props here. And then when you're done, all you just, you don't have to rig it. Uh, you just, I mean, unless you want to have physics, of course. But you just have to make your object here, you know. Uh, it could be a single object or something like that, like this. Um, but then you can basically go to File export and then you can export as FBX and then you could put that into unity you do not need to convert to VRM we do not need that we just need the FBX file now if you don't know how to use blender and you want to um, get some free props then I would recommend websites like turbo squid or sketchfab or something like that um, or you could check DeviantArt, but I don't recommend um, if you're thinking about putting MMD assets to your Vignon setup, just know for a fact that MMD assets don't allow commercial use. And assuming that you're a VTuber, you're probably going to, you're definitely going to be doing commercial use because you, you know, you gain donations and such. Unless you get prior permission from the person, do not use MMD assets. But basically though, um, Sketchfab, Turbo Squid and such, they do have, um... 3d models there you can download for free or you could pay for pre-existing ones if you want to commission somebody i would recommend look through twitter uh you'll have to make a twitter account and you can try hiring someone there but if you prefer free just look up some 3d modeling websites or 3d model websites and you could just download from there and then if you have the fbx file and the textures the png images you could be able to put it into unity basically so for my case because i made my own I have my FBX file here, and then I have my texture folder here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it there. Now, what you're going to then do uh, is you're going to click and drag your FBX to your scene. So you just click this and just click drag to your hierarchy. This is a hierarchy. And um, of course, if you by any chance don't know how to navigate Unity, then please take the time to look up a Unity beginner's tutorial on how the navigation works. There are plenty of tutorials out there. You can Google it. But basically, uh, once you have that, you can select your FBX, um, you know, object here. And what you'll do is you're going to click on extract, you know, you're going to click on the materials tab and click on extract materials. That's what you're going to do next. So you're going to then right click, uh, add a new folder. I'm going to name this materials. And then I'm going to put all my materials right here. Once you have that, you can then shift select your materials here. Um, for me, I'm going to change it to M-Tune, but basically you can add whatever shader. You can add Koyomi, Lil Tune, Arc Tune. Like, you can basically just go on the internet, download whatever fancy, um, tune shader that you want, uh, or something like that, and you could just use it from there, basically. For my case, I'm going to go ahead and add my stuff here, basically, like this. I just click and drag the texture folder and just load it here so it'll work like that. But basically once you have your, you know, you don't have to have it anything fancy. I just kind of just plop this in. It's like, okay, it's all good. You don't have to be fancy unless you want to. Do whatever you want. Have fun. But either way, uh, once you have your prop, you add your materials and your textures basically. Um, if the, let's say if it's like a VTS Pog pet or something, you may want to have Legacy Blend Shape Normals activate here, but if there are no blend shapes, you don't need to activate this. But if it has blend shape, please activate this. Now, if you happen to see that your game controller or something is a bit too big, um, I would say you can take the scale factor. Uh, like if it's supposed to be a small object, you can put the scale factor to 0 0.3 or 0 0.1. Uh, so it could be smaller for Vignon. Um, you don't always have to do this because Vignon does have a scaling feature in the program. But that's if you need some extra scaling, basically. So you could do that. Uh, and it helps. So what you're going to then do, basically, is that once you have your prop all pretty up and such, you're going to then click on your game controller. Um, and then all you really have to do is just click on uh, the Vignon SDK, export the prop, and then... Um, basically you can go through your PC, so I could just go through here with Vignon, um, then go to items, and then I'm gonna name this as Testo, so it doesn't override my current controller. 
go to props here and then you could just uh, save it here and then just give it some time and then that's about it really that's how you make a vignon prop now unless you want to add some stuff like physics or uh, constraints or something like that um, you could so like if you want to add physics so you can like select the game controller you can add a component type in um, if you put in the uni VRM pl um, unity package that is you can load in the VRM spring bones which they're completely free you could just um, well it's because this is a game controller uh, you could click and drag and add your physics here and it'll work perfectly fine with the Vignan SDK or dynamic bones you cannot use fizz bones you cannot use fizz bones because VR chat's copyright does not allow other developers to integrate fizz bones to their programs you cannot use fizz bones we call them either spring bones or just physics um, so it could either be so you can either choose the VRM spring bones or dynamic bones which is technically spring bones and um, and then you could also use magic cloth but I've heard that there were some issues with magic cloth uh, but that's if you want like realistic physics uh, you could try and see if it works out for you but from prior experience it had issues probably when Vignon updates down the line it'll probably have that working who knows but either way, that's pretty much how you can convert your prop to a, you know, your object to a Vignon prop. And then all you have to do is just you open up Vignon, and I'm going to show you how you can load it. Ba, 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 ba. So once you have Vignon open, you're going to click on the props button right here. Then you're going to click on add prop, and then um, pretty much go to Vignon, go to your items folder then props and then you're going to find the prop that you made from unity and you're gonna click on you know for my case it's named test yours can be named something else and um, pretty much for my game controller it's in my head so by default I'll load in the head but you'll have to change your linked bones to be somewhere else so for my case I'll put it at the right hand and then basically what you can do is you can either use the sliders to move it, but if by any chance the sliders are a bit too much for you, what you can do is you can, at the bottom left of the transform mode here, you can toggle which one you want, like either rotate, scale, or move, and you can use the arrow keys. Now sadly for Vignan, the, arrows, uh, the um, X arrow here is broken, but it is what it is. So basically, uh, you just adjust it um, despite being broken. And basically, if you want to slow it down, hold the shift key so you can be a lot more precise in your movement, basically. So as you can see, I can be able to, I'll have to adjust my camera and just rotate this around, basically. And as you can see, the sliders are adjusting. So that's what you can do. Uh, and you just adjust to however you want it, basically. Again, it really just depends on the prop, where you want it, and so on, basically. Um, there you go. I uh, Mainly, you could just, like, move your mouse left and right, and it'll probably, like, work as well. Again, it's a, it's a little finicky on the controls. It's just how it is. Um, but then, let's say if your prop is too big for the hand, right? Like, you can see how it's too big. Uh, you can then, um, you can also use scale, basically, um, and you can scale with, like, individual, or you could just use the sliders here, which the sliders work pretty well, um, and you could just control C and then paste, remember it will reset your camera though, but you can copy the values, paste it all here, that way, um, that way, like, you can see that the controller is smaller or whatever your prop is. Or if it's too small, then you can make it bigger and such, basically. So, yeah. Um, and that's pretty much, like, how you can be able to uh, do your adjustments, basically. Um, and then you can change the link to however you want. So, yeah. You can also even have it where it always faces the camera if you want that. But I don't always recommend it, depending on what the prop is that is. Like, if it's, like, a GIF or a... Um, or PNG, you could have that, but it depends. But either way, though, for the most part, that's pretty much how you would go along with, um, 
getting the prop onto your model and loading into Vina, and also how you can basically convert the prop or their FBX to become a Vina prop file. I hope that this tutorial helps you out though, and let me know if you have any other questions. Please join the Super Drill Discord server as that is where you can get all the help and all the information about how to use Vinyan. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. Have a lovely day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye! Thank you so much to all my Snowflake members. In case you don't know, I have YouTube membership, so if you want to get access to extra perks and further support me and what I do, then feel free to join the Snowflake membership. Otherwise though, just you guys watching is just enough support for me and I appreciate every ounce of it. So, either way though, I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!